So we all know that there's been massive changes to a lot of nations in Northern Europe with the recent update, but there's one nation, and yes, I'm talking about Lithuania, you probably guessed it, that has a super fun mission tree added. Not only that, but some extra flavor to go along with that. Spice it up, let's say. It might not be the biggest mission tree, but it's definitely a very intense mission tree. With the ability to get the Restoration of Union CB on Poland, as well as on the Muscovites after we take some provinces in Novgorod and a lot of other expansions. But the thing that really shines with this mission tree is the fact that there's some missions here that are completely different. Like the ability after we enact the Magdeburg Laws to upgrade our national idea. That's right, the Magdeburg Laws give 10% national tax modifier. But after we click this mission here, that's going to change and that national idea is going to be considered considerably better than it is right now. There's a lot of other quirky stuff like that in the mission tree. Not to mention Lithuania is a massive nation with a massive potential for expansion as well since we have easy access to three different religious areas, the Orthodox, the Sunnis and the Catholics. So that means as the Lithuanians we can dodge in between aggressive expansion and conquer the schnapps out of everybody. Hold up sec, we get a claim on Colm. <laughs> else to the yes my boys that's literally one of the most important things we gotta do early on is attack novgorod before the muscovites do that was a really lucky agenda we got there let's go with our standard estates here that of course includes the burger loans amongst the mana points and so on if you want to know more about how to figure out your estates you'll find a link to a video dedicated to this in the description below since we're going into novgorod we will be making them our rivals just like we will the great horde since this is prime expansion land so the plan is probably going to be dodging between orthodox novgorod muslim great horde and catholic poland early on to get that uh, personal union enacted and work our way from there another important thing is that we need to lower the autonomy in our provinces from the moment that we start because we start with quite a lot of autonomy overall in pretty much half of our country essentially this half here the area that is not predominantly lithuanian in order to do stable the interior we need to get less than 10% autonomy in our provinces as well as estates loyalty 55 or greater so that means we gotta really boost up our estate levels right now we're at 35 since we seized the crownlands so after we get some crownlands we might even help us out by selling 10% later on after we take more land and we take more crownlands as consequence we're also going to be recruiting the free company in Turovas and we will be recruiting two more units infantry units in our main army in Vilnius. Alliance wise we have a ton of options. We're gonna try and get alliances in the HRE predominantly like the Bohemians. If possible also Brandenburg and even Austria is not a bad idea if you can. 1722 actually that is not too bad. If I improve relations with them a little bit I might get that alliance. I initially was gonna be attacking the Livonians first and the Poles but because of circumstances because I got the mission I'm gonna be gunning from Novgorod first before the Muscovites do and then after I'll be gunning for the Livonians. So let's start this Wardski Kobolage rate Odoyev so we uh, get rid of this annoying one province minor nation here also and rush these parts before Muscovy does. Within the first few years or months of the game you're gonna get this event and of course we choose between becoming Poland's little bitch I mean personal union I meant personal union or uh, or not becoming their little uh, personal union so we're not gonna be becoming their personal union but this gives us the mission the Polish succession which gives us a restoration of Union CB against Poland so we can use that after our war with Novgorod is done. I would have honestly used that before the war with Novgorod if I didn't get the claims on these bad boys. Hey boys we just got lucky. Get it? Because we got the Fort of Lucky. I'm funny damn it I'm funny okay? And our luck just ran out because Novgorod's gonna crush our armies there. <laughs> Alright let's uh let's try our best to reinforce that before we get stack wiped. Oh we got the bad roll. No. Oh my god I got a zero they got a zero two though okay i got reinforced i won but i have to say those were the worst dice rolls i've seen in a very long time nothing beats being romanian whilst having mexican quesadilla and um french fries in japan oh yeah and i'm playing a, a swedish game as lithuania if that doesn't say worldwide i don't know what does ah the famous sack of novgorod written in the annals of history by the great historian milu Kalifus himself, my fellow history enjoyers, will know 
know of this great uh, historian, of course. There you go, boys. We got Odoyev also. Let's see if we can piece him out. We can, of course, 146, 142, and that's it for these boyos. I'm getting a claim on Riazan because they did not ally Muscovy and they allied Tver. So it's very likely that Riazan's gonna disappear very soon. Peace deal wise, I have a few options. Obviously, I'm gonna go for the entirety of the Novgorod state, which I need for my mission to get the PU on the Muscovites, but I could also take Nevaladoga, which is 100% war score, and this is where 90% of the wealth of Novgorod lays in. The rest of these lands are basically horrible, low development crap lands that nobody cares about, but I'm not gonna take Neva and Ladoga for the fact that I don't really care about Neva and Ladoga that much. I want Ingerman land to basically prevent anyone from going into the Livonian lands from the east, and I also want the money that they have to fix my economy. Coalition, only the Russian nations care about, well, Russian countries really care about, which means that I don't need to care about it. Hey, <laughs> hey, boys! We're also gonna be concentrating this area here and we're gonna be coring it up. We're doing the concentration because we are a little bit lacking with our admin points and this is not an accepted culture, so it's better to just concentrate them. We might as well, right? And right on time, the Muscovites declared their own war against Novgorod. <laughs> as if they have anything else left to take that's actually worth it, bruh. We're also bringing our troops by the border with Poland because, ya guessed it, we're going for the Polish succession here, boys. We got our CB against the Poles as well as against the Livonians, and we're gonna enforce both of these CBs. We're gonna be making Livonia our little Bishki, and we're gonna be making um, the Poles our bigger Bishki. Bishki, in case you didn't know, is um, an ancient, obscure Romanian word for a uh, friend. That's that's what it means. We're we're gonna make him our little friend. Poland, Bohemia, because why not? Why not, boys? Am I right? If we can, we might as well. We promised to give them land, so they're probably gonna cancel the alliance with us when they realize they're not getting schnapps from us. Ah, I love the smell of burnt Polish lands in the morning. Is basically what every Lithuanian in my army just said right now, boys. That's what's going on. We're ravaging these lands, all right? We're not friendly to Poland. This is the bad alternate history. My beloved Moldovans have chosen the wrong side and they got exterminado as consequence. Not to fear, they will soon be my vassal because we're gonna get the union with the Poles, so Poland having that vassal means technically they're my vassal. It makes more sense than I'm saying here, alright? Isn't this like the third time I wipe out Moldova's army? How many armies did they build, man? Whenever I have vassals, they build one or two units, and whenever I'm fighting somebody else's vassal, they have like a thousand billion units, man. Come on. It's not fair. And I think that is the last of the polls. Or not, I'm wrong, they still have 6,000. Or 5,000 to be precise, bro. And they just retreated next to my army, okay? <laughs> Are they going to Plok again? No, they're going to Gniezo, so Bohemia's gonna wipe them out. Noise. I guess Bohemia's stealing my glory over here, boys. And we have the war score, we need to get the union with Poland, as well as the money that we want to get from them. Oh, how loyal the Poles are, boys. <laughs> Let's go click the March West mission. This is what I'm saying. This is the only mission tree that gives this particular modifier here. And it just makes it absolutely beautiful. Next up, we gotta take out the Zelivonions. So, uh, well, let me kill off my rebels first, I guess. And of course, Riazan allied Muscovy to cuck me over so I cannot attack him anymore. Feels bleat, man. Feels really bleat. Oh, Lord, I just realized it's only March 1449. It has not even been five years. And what the hell happened here? What? Denmark, you took Neva and other- Oh god, this is so border go right now. This is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and Novgorod still exists in one province. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, uh, it's only been five years, less than five years, and we already managed to double in size here by taking over Poland, Mazovia, Moldova, and the rich parts of Novgorod. Our armies are completely depleted, so we're gonna be getting more mercenaries. We're gonna actually hire the Grand Company, and we're gonna be consulting consolidating our main army forces here. We're gonna hit the consolidate button and we're gonna basically lose a lot of units, but that also means we're not going over our land force limit. We only have a few months left and then we can attack Livonians. We start with the five years truce with the Livonians, so um, we gotta wait for that to finish first. Don't forget to also get more crown lands so we can uh, get rid of the autonomy debuff faster. I also recycled my burger loans since now I got 178 ducats rather than 100 and two or some schnapps like that. I'm also going to be establishing the Cossacks Regiment because that means I got all the requirements to get the 
Cossacks mission, and that offers me four Eastern Knights Cossacks in my capital, as well as permanent claims. So now, we can use these bad boys with the extra 10% shock damage inflicted. Did we just become a full-on cavalry army here? I think we did, didn't we? Totally not even intended. So next up, if we conquer Crimea, we get the Crimean Steps, which is gonna give us a really interesting estate, let's say. I'll leave it as that. I'll show you guys what I mean after we click this mission and how powerful that particular mission can be. We have two CBs we can use on the Livonians. We can either use the Subjugation CB, which means we're gonna be making them a vassal, or we can use the Direct Conquest one, which means we're gonna be conquering or their lands. I personally really like the Conquest one because I'm a warmongering SOB, but you can go for the Vassalage if you want. It's your choice. I'm gonna call in whatever I can as well. I don't care. By calling in Volgast and Brandenburg, I guess I do care because by calling them in, the Teutons are gonna focus on them rather than my land and I can just have free reign and destroying all of the Livonian lands. Holy schnapps! Look at Karakoyunlu go, boys! They completely killed off Akoyunlu. So now I guess it's uh, only the black sheep roaming around these areas, if you know what I mean. I'm, t I'm saying it's a black sheep because that's what it means, alright? Karakoyunlu is a black sheep. You don't know Turkish? I don't know why you even exist, bro. Come on. Oh, nine! My heir has fallen illith. Uh, I think we're gonna pray for his life. Oh, he died! Oh, that is horrible. Oh. So anyway, uh, we're gonna continue our expansion into here and, um, pray that we're gonna get a new heir. You know, something better than just a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, come on! 1-1-1 one, one, one for real right now? <laughs> no, I don't want... <laughs> Seriously, game? At least we got the stack wipe of, uh, Livonia going for us, right? And my little vassal slash pets in the south have done a good job. They killed off Teutonic Order's army, only 4,000 left, so, um, that means we can piece these boys out after they start sieging stuff as well. I'm gonna be making Riga my vassal for two reasons. First one is because I can and I want to, and second one is because Riga is actually surprisingly a really good vassal. If you use Riga's missions and you can help them achieve some of these missions here, like for example, develop our city where we just literally need to build up a few buildings in here, then they get all of these modifiers, and that means that Riga is gonna be insanely powerful, and we can keep them around as a powerful little vassal for at least the first part of the game, right? Like the first 50 to 100 years. And these guys did not do an amazing job, because I had to come down from the Livonian lands to piece out the uh, Teutons, apparently, boys. 114 ducats? Sure, I'll go for the 114 ducats. Now we can piece out the Livonians, finally. And only a few nations give a schnapps about me killing off the entirety of Livonia. That's why I also fully annex them. I know what some of you are thinking. Why didn't you vassalize them so you can give out the strong duchy's privilege afterwards? Because you have two vassals and you need two vassals for that. I will get my second vassal. However, it is not going to be uh, the Livonians. I'd rather much get the Livonian lands directly so I can establish my own lands in the Baltic node, which I honestly really want to change and make the Baltic my main trade node later, later down the line, much later in the game, I will probably make the Lubeck node my main node, or the Novgorod node also. Both of them are great, but for the time being, the Baltic is gonna suffice. So with this mission enacted, we get claims on, uh, basically the Teutonic lands here, the western part of the Teutonic lands. We need these three provinces to do the next mission, as well as we need to either convert some of our provinces to Lithuanian, or have four accepted cultures in our country. So, obviously, the best option would be to go for the Lithuanian one. So we're gonna be converting some of these provinces to Lithuanian. If you were thinking that my second vassal is gonna be the one province miner of Valachia, you are correct. We have all we need for these boys. We just gotta get them to 190 relations and then we can use their courts to attack the Hungarians later on. And we're also gonna be attacking the Crimeans, but for the time being, we're actually focusing on uh, fixing our economy. So it's a little bit of a chill period. I'm even thinking of allying the Great Horde, which apparently I am able to, and I can use the Great Horde as bait give Great Horde lands to Nogai, which is an ally of the Crimeans, and this way I would easily get rid of Nogai from the war when I attack Crimea. We paid 24 ducats to take on the Valachian's debt, which in turn means- hold up sick, hold up. Yeah, in turn it means that we get the vassal. Hold up sick, I wanna see who got this. Oh, France got the Burgundians! Oh, dude! That's gonna make for a ridiculously strong France. I might be able to actually ally them if I cancel my alliance with the uh, Aragon. Yeah, that's definitely the play. Yeah, I just have to 
wait until they integrate one more of their vassals. As for Valachia, welcome to the fray, boyos. It is an honor to have you a part of the Lithuanian swarm. And that, of course, means we're giving out the strong duchies privilege. So I just spawned Renaissance in the province of Trakai. I've done this for a couple of reasons. First off, I obviously don't want to wait for Renaissance to appear in my lands, as it might take a little bit of time. And second off, Trakai is very special because it has the monument here, which can give me up to 50% local manpower extra. So once I fully upgrade this bad boy, I'm going to be doubling the amount of manpower that I get essentially. Plus, I'm going to get reform progress growth plus 20%. So I will be prioritizing this. Another reason is because I need to get more provinces with Lithuanian culture and I need to boost up my economy a little bit. So I'm basically developing all of the Lithuanian provinces right now. And then after I can uh, convert provinces, I'm also going to convert them to Lithuanian. This is what I'm talking about here. Enforce a commonwealth. I need to have 175 development in Lithuanian provinces. And the way you do that is either you develop your starting Lithuanian provinces or you just convert other provinces to Lithuanian. Either works. My idea of cheesing everything and uh, bringing in the Great Horde didn't work because they're not willing to join this war. But hey, I'll handle these boys by myself. Let's go for Yiddish school and start this adventure in the Krymoyan lands. No gay officially just became my uh, little piggy bank, as did Kazan after I take a few of their provinces here. I would love to take Bajgird, but I cannot just snake there yet. We will eventually. Oh my god, I just noticed Valachia is bullying Karaman. They killed their army and now they're sieging down the cat. Well, they're trying to siege down the capital anyway. They don't have enough troops. And meanwhile, Karaman is rebuilding their soldiers in the south of and I have a strong suspicion that they're going to be attacking Valachia. Here's the really cool part, guys. Because we're able to fully annex Crimea, what happens is their vassals and their uh, tributaries become ours. So that means we got Theodoro as a tributary of Lithuania. That's right. Not a vassal, a tributary. And we also got uh, Circassia as a vassal because they were a vassal of Crimea. Now, the problem with this is that I believe for my mission, I need to have these guys as a non-tributary subject. Yep. Yep, that is correct. So that means I have to cancel the tributary status of these boys and uh, kill them. That does give me five years truce, which is really annoying because I would have rather not have those five years of truce since now it's possible for somebody else to attack Theodoro, i.e. the Ottomans. Also going to be doing a quick war against uh, Genoa. Hey, I can call on Austria. Austria can do the heavy lifting for me then because they're right next to Genoa and uh, I'm going to take these three provinces that I also need in these lands. Look at that. Looks like the Genoese army is actually drilling over here here so um go ahead and kill him in that case oh there you go boys this is probably the one time that i actually can say arrivederci because they're technically italians right well not technically genoese they're super italian i also gone ahead and i've uh, deleted my alliance with the great horde since you know they're useless now might as well just attack and take their lands if they're not going to be of any help we got the war score for these three provinces. I'm not pushing for anything else. I just want the Crimean lands. I don't care about the Italian holdings of the Genoese. For the time being, I am an Eastern European power, even though, you know, modern Romania is technically uh, Baltic, right? We don't call them Eastern Europeans. I totally did not get paid by the Lithuanian government to say this. I promise. Also, you can use my link in the description below to become a Lithuanian citizen. Hey, guess which one of my two allies over here is the new emperor of the HRE. That's right, it's the Bohemian. And that also means I'm gonna be canceling my alliance with Austria and changing it with an alliance with the French. Oh, actually, I can get both now? What? Oh, they're not rivaled anymore. Damn. Right, because these guys are weaklings now. Why am I improving relations with the Great Horde? And speaking of weaklings, I gotta get new uh, rivals. Otherwise, I'm stuck with only one rival, okay? Now everybody hates me. Basically, I'm rival with the Ottomans, rival with the Muscovites, and uh, I forgot the third rival. Probably not important. Oh, right, it's uh, Mamluks. What's going Going on there great horde you don't look too good sir having problems with the rebellions i see oh it's time boys it's time we have an exatenstein is it theodorensteinski does that mean i can do my mission oh i need to own cork i have to core kafa and our truce is over with uh, the great horde so we can attack him too which means we get even more land that we definitely need to do those juicy missions i was referring to earlier when it comes to our third government reform we're of course going 
going for the biggest exploit in EO4 right now, which allows us to centralize states and refund everything to us, as well as it lowers the autonomy, and because we need lowered autonomy for the next mission, that's gonna come in massive handy. We also can do Conquest of Crimea, which brings up the Crimean Steps event. So we have three options. We can get Cavalry Combat Ability and uh, Loyalty for the Cossacks for a few years. We can enable the tribes for 30 years, or we can just get a Center of Trade in Kaffa increased by one. Obviously, enable the tribes estate, which means that we now have five estates, guys. This is insane. You want to know why it's insane? Look at this. We can guarantee leadership of the host that offers general cost minus 10 and yearly army tradition minus 0.5. We also can give national manpower plus 20% as well as governing capacity. And the best part is that we mix that in with the yearly army tradition from the Cossacks and the general cost and yearly army tradition from the Shalakta, which means we have 20% cheaper generals aside from the amazing army tradition bonuses and the manpower we got the manpower too plus we also can get the bonuses from the tribes which mix in amazingly with the cossack bonuses and the fact that we also went for aristocratic ideas means that our cavalry units are insanely cheap now it only costs us 17 ducats to get cavalry units compared to the base cost take warsaw oh my god am i actually gonna do that to them. That's their capital, bro. What? Oh, they're gonna be pissed. I'm gonna take Warso. <laughs> I took Warsaw, it's mine, okay? It's my land. We managed to get Astrakhan. I don't think I can do 100% war deal because uh, I cannot reach Khorasan and it's really annoying to reach Karaman also, so I'm not even trying. But I can take most of the provinces I'm interested in. I'm gonna leave Tambov alive for the Muscovites. Actually, no, I'm not gonna leave them Tambov. I'm gonna leave one province in the middle here so I can take it in the next war myself. Plus, I'm taking only Manlish from here so I can release Astrakhan afterwards. Nobody in the massive coalition, so we're actually okay aggressive expansion wise let's also release astrakhan now Buyashnoki, and in the next war we can fully annex the great horde and we can feed pretty much all of it to our brand new vasalski if you enjoy this video you're gonna love my poland run click right over here and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support 